Here we are, another episode of Subs with Bloods. Here we are, Subs with Bloods. And uh, today, my partner, it's not just Subs with Luds anymore, it's Subs with Rads and Luds. And uh, today we have one of the best pair of defensemen to play in their era, Richard Matvichuk, and a returner who had the most views of all time in this podcast, Big Big Captain Darren Hatcher. Hey, thanks you guys for showing up. Our we're we're here stuff. again. Uh, Hatcher was the same time last year, right? We yeah. had the Big Hearts uh, event. As we record this thing, we're starting tonight, and then we'll play the Big Hearts thing tomorrow. Um, but it's awesome to have you guys both here. Maddie, it's happy to have you come back and participate in this thing. And um, but I, this is where I just kind of bow out and let the professional guy, oh, yeah. John Radican, do his thing. Well, and the big hearts thing, like there's a big draft tonight, and then you guys all play tomorrow, right? You play, you go, don't play. We'll be there. You won't be. You won't. No, we'll be there. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, well, we're still going to say. We're going to put our stuff on. Okay. We're gonna now the game start on. depending how you get drafted. Like there's a draft tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and so. Bottom line is that there, there, I think there's like 18 teams, and whatever group raises the most money, uh, however they want to do it, ends up having the first overall pick, right? So that's what. Where'd you go last year? Were you a first rounder? Number three. You were number three. Who's number? Who's number one? Uh, Com- no, not Tommy. Commodore. Commodore. <clears throat> yeah, Smoke Show. His name's come up a few times in the last couple of weeks. Yes, it has. <laughs> but then what we do is you could either start at 8 a.m., 9 or 10 or something like that, and then you'll play every other game. You may play a couple back-to-back games. We'll play four games or so. Uh, there's a all-star game later on in the afternoon. Games, remember how long they were? Like, it's running time. 220s, like 225. Like 30, yeah. 30 to 40 minutes. Yeah, yeah. But it's... It's it's a free for all. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like yeah. we're here to entertain, right? And we do a pretty good job of it. And you, a lot of goal scoring, a lot of you know. No, not necessarily. Really? No. Some of them are pretty good games actually. Yeah. Some of them are. Oh, yeah, wow. that's what I would say. And Maddie, have you played in this before? No, first yeah. year. Oh, really? I'm a newbie. All right. So how long has it been since you like, uh, you know, strapped them on against guys like this? It's been a while. I bet. It's been a while. Yeah. Well, they're not getting smaller either. No. <laughs> well, speak for yourselves. Some of us skate every single day. Well, I do too, but I don't have gear. Yeah, but you got to yeah. skate. You got to practice with your kids, and you got to get involved. And last night you guys weren't there. We had a we had another game last yeah. night. So some of the guys, Yuri Letnin is here in town. Was uh, he playing? Yeah, Let, Yuri Let, probably be here. Brendan Morrow's around. playing. Marty Turco's playing. We had a game last night with a bunch of the A League guys, and so that was a, a good tempo. But um, you know, it, it. But it's all for fun. Yeah. yeah. And for charity, it's great. It's a great cause. But I would have to think coming back, Hatch. You know, this is the only time of year you come back, right? It's something to look forward to. Yeah. A chance to get together with all these guys, right? And and to you know, all tell lies about you know your your careers and how great you feel. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Marty texted me like I don't know six weeks ago, two months ago, whatever it was. Said you want to play down. I was like, yes, sir. <laughs> Well, no, no, it's it's always fun coming back, seeing everyone. A, and it's a podcast, right? Yeah. So last year at this same time, Hatch yeah. got in early. Got in about what you got like 10, 30, 11 o'clock, something like that. And by the way, we are at Tight End, Tight yeah. End Sports Bar over here in Plano. So we're doing a live little thing, and I think uh, there's probably going to be more of these in the future. But anyway, so I I get a call or first. Anyway, long story short, let's keep it like this. So Hatch is here for about, an, how long were you here? An hour? hour? Not long, yeah. Not, not that long. <clears throat> and I get this call back. Well, Hatch is, now this is at noonish. Okay. The Hatch has already been kicked out. Of here? <laughs> yeah, of here. Which? No, no, no. We, we were cut Asked off. you to leave? Cut, cut off. Oh, cut off. That's the cut same off. thing. What the point is danger? Yeah, you're going to stay. You're getting kicked out. Yeah. For some reason. So, so our captain, Darian Hatcher, get, gets booted from the bar by noonish or 1 o'clock. And so I I hear about it, and I called the manager at the time. And we're friends, and I, I know the owner and stuff like that. And I said, hey. And he goes, Luds, I know, I know. And I didn't get to say anything. And basically I said, how the fuck do you kick Darian Hatcher out of a bar by noon? And he goes, our waitress is here. When they wait on tables and things like that, they keep tabs on how many beers they've had and things like that. And make sure, and they're being responsible here at tight end. So, and I said, yeah. Well, the problem was is that Darian had nine big beers in 45 minutes. 
<laughs> and I, I mean, I don't even know how many ounces there are in a big beer. But I, all I said was, did you look at the guy? Yeah, he's a big man. Like, he, he could do that in 30 minutes if he wanted to. And he's so, been doing it for 30 years. So yeah, basically, exactly. I'm sure next year it'll be 12 beers in a half hour, right? right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. speaking of that. Look at this. You guys are drinking your beers. Oh, look at that. What is that? What is that? We've been selling this. And and, uh, you see this, Troy? For God's sake. John, you know what camera is yours? Look at that one's right on. Troy, we're drinking your beer. I am on this one. Right here. There you go. I guess I don't know what camera I'm on. Yeah, yeah. I'm down there. You're right there. This is me. Anyway, Uh, Troy, we're drinking your beer, and we're going to call you. We'll be calling. Yeah, but John will be calling, and then uh, we're gonna call Dion no, next. You know what they? Uh, so they asked for my name when I got a beat, and I said why? And they said, well, we have to keep track, right? Of yeah, we're it's all on your tab. Right? That's why. Well, well, maybe, but I said uh, I'm Irish. You know, we drink a lot of beer, Irish people. Fast. <laughs> so anyway, here we are. So anyway, well, we we do have one it. in each hand. So all right, so Maddie, first, first off, <laughs> we haven't seen you in a while. I mean, I've seen you, and I've talked to you, and things like that. Get us up to speed on what you've been doing the last few years as far as youth hockey and things like that. Uh, well, I was in Burnaby, Canada, up in Vancouver there, running an academy program for youth hockey. Um, anywhere from U18s all the way down to U13. And then we had our minor hockey. And then uh, in the summer of uh, this summer, a couple of months ago, actually, uh, Okanagan Hockey Group out of Penticton uh, called me and asked me if we wanted to bring that same, same uh, I guess you could say, pie to put together down in Denver. So we brought that uh, academy model down to Denver, and was that a tough, tough decision for you? Uh, it really wasn't. Uh, with Tracy being from uh, from this here in Dallas, and the boys being American, it was a pretty easy call. When it was uh, it was time to come back home, and uh, obviously with the support that I have from the family and Tracy's family being here, that uh, when the phone came ringing, it was it was time to jump on a plane and come south. So, so do you still have the place in Vancouver too? Right? No, is, no, no, we got rid of everything. Got rid of so, that uh, one and started the deal. Yeah, yeah. So we're down in Denver now. Denver home. Uh, what do you do? Just take that trailer that you guys are living in and push over? It's the exact same trailer I had when I left, too. That's the funny thing is that 8 by 10 that I think you used to use actually going to Wisconsin and back. You still got it. So um, so let me tell you what this guy does. Oh, boy. So the first year, Maddie, I think it was your first year here in Dallas, right? Or was it Minnesota? Anyway, well, regardless, the first year Minnesota. that we end up. He comes up, he comes up to Wisconsin and he's there for a weekend or I don't know, maybe a week at most. And then I get a phone call from him. It was probably when we were back. I don't know if we were back here yet or wherever we were. I mean, it wasn't that much longer. And he called me and he says, hey, I got that place. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I'm back here now in Dallas. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking where I used to live over in Colleyville. Yeah. And I said, oh, you got a place in Colleyville? And he goes, uh, no, 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 in Eagle River, my hometown. I said, what? And he goes, yeah. I said, what place? He goes, that place next to you, a couple doors down. And I said, he was here for, that was your first visit. Yeah, we went up for the weekend. Yeah, they went up for the weekend, and I said, you were here for like four days, and you decided to buy a house (laughs) up here in Wisconsin? <laughs> and he did. He bought one right on the point, kind of around the corner from me in Wisconsin. And uh, but you were there for what? You had the a couple of years. A couple of years. A couple we of years, the and then uh, the wheels was, fell off. It was the longest summers that I could ever imagine. <laughs> it's good to see Lutz is actually still alive because I've seen him drive a. Oh, drop something! I've seen him drive a Harley straight into the bush. Oh boy! I've seen him. I, I missed the end of the road. He went right through the bush. He was like a deer when he went in. I don't know how he didn't hit anything. <laughs> I've seen him wreck a sea dew at full speed, hit a bridge. It was his. Oh, nice. It was his sea dew. Brand C-Doo. new sea dew right out of the box. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I, pulled the, I pulled the cord. I, and Hatch is down there laughing, going, oh, you've done all that stuff. <laughs> now, both of you guys, there is a poster out there, by the way. There's a poster still floating around when we, uh, I think there's seven of us. I think seven and of us. the poster, I think there's five. five. Is that all there was? Five of us? Me, well, you, Tarbo. Maddie. Sid? Sid. 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 We, couldn't get, we couldn't fit Huey's car in there, so. Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, oh, I remember. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, called yeah. The, the Bad Boys yeah, of Dallas Hockey. Yeah, I yeah. So the we Mosquitoes. The what? The Mosquitoes. Well, it, could, it should have been the Black Widows from the, the old uh, movie. So you guys were young defensemen coming in um, when he was the senior, the veteran, the leader, right? Most rookies, most young guys have a guy, right? Who takes him under their wing, takes was, it, was, was that him for you, Hatch? You were here first. Was that him for you? No, Hatch and I did. They they came in in Minnesota. 
Okay. Oh, and you weren't here yet. You? Yeah, he was in Minnesota. Okay. No, not when your first year, right? Was I here your first year? Oh, uh, was I in Minnesota? You weren't here my first year. Not in Minnesota. No, no, no. Matty, was I there your you first year? You came my yeah, first there. year. Okay. But you guys pretty much came in together. I mean, it was. Yeah, I came in, and then next year Matty came in. Next year, yeah, yeah. 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 And Matty, you you came in, but only played right away when you came. You played yeah. what one game, and then. No, I was uh, my first year. I think I played fifty something, and then I got sent out. Okay. I started hanging out with you, and they sent me down. Yeah. That's what I was wondering. They want you as, to learn as a veteran like that to take you under his wing and stuff. You know how that happened. You know what? Like when when these guys came in, they were both. Uh, well, you were both first. Well, you were a first rounder for sure. You were They're both the third. You were, no, we were both eight. Eight. We were eight, both eighth overall. Eighth, eighth overall. Yeah. Yeah. But when you weren't partners in Minnesota, were you? No. 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 It, it didn't. I was with Tenner quite a bit. Mark Tenorti, who was our captain at the time. Yeah. yeah. Matty, who was your first partner? I was all over. I was with you. I, I was all over the place. Um, I didn't play a bunch until, actually, until we moved here. And then when they named Hatch captain there, and uh, Tinner broke his leg is what yeah. I got called back Bad up. Bad one. Yeah. No. So, you know, now that, now that I think about it, actually, you might have been there, lads, because I remember you used to come over Doug's house yeah, and, and play pool. So, D- and and speaking of Doug, Doug yeah. uh, hit and pools. when Hatchie says Doug, you mean Doug Armstrong. Yep. Army, Doug yeah. Armstrong, when Army got started, he was... Travel you guys were... were you were living with him? Yeah, I lived with him, and then Maddie lived with him near after. Yeah. And and he was the ticket guy. Like the travel sucker. He used to hand out meal money. Oh what? no kidding! Yeah. yeah, get to the airport, get plane tickets, yeah. and now he's, in my opinion, arguably one of the top two or three general managers yeah, it's done in the a, NHL. Done a good job. Mm-hmm. St. Louis won a cup, you know, with us, and then won one St. Louis. Uh, how was he to live with? Was he a strict guy, or he's really never around? Yeah, I thought he was. I thought he was Spot. great. To be honest. Yeah, and uh, Kelly was super sweet. And uh, his wife. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're going back like thirty years or whatever. Yeah. Right? yeah. So it's like, well, that's where the connection kind of started with me and him. Is they they flew Darian and I down to Minnesota to participate in a summer camp together. We just lived at Armies yeah. by ourselves. Oh, and really? Kelly were gone, and yeah. So we just lived. It's pretty good. Wait, for, you had the house by yourself. Yeah. In the summer. It's pretty good for an eighteen and nineteen. For, I was just without him. Yeah. Like without. It was the just family. two of us. Just yeah, they family. left. They they. I think they went to Sarnia. To see Doug's parents. You'd like to share any of that first yeah. summer? No, like. <laughs> no. <laughs> we became pretty good acquaintances. <laughs> so, but had had both of you had experience like with juniors where you lived with a family before? You had there, you had, yeah. yeah. So, like, it's it's such a cool concept that happens in hockey. It happened last year here with Joe Pavelski and, and Wyatt Johnston. It's a, it's a neat um, thing when some, you know, and Armstrong in that case, or or Pavelski in this case, takes a kid and just kind of ushers them in, isn't it? Isn't it happens. Well, you know, it's a lot for a young kid, right? It, it, it really is a lot to transition, leave everything. Did you guys it, it, live with anybody when you were pro? When what? Like Wyatt? Like when you turned pro, did no, you live with I, I a former with, or a current I lived, player? I lived with Doug my first year. And that was okay. <laughs> yeah. And see, Wyatt Johnson lived with Joe Pavelski right. his first year here. But, but it's a lot, you know, to learn. It's just to learn to, from cooking meals. To, it's just all the small stuff of life. Right. That, and, yeah. uh, you know, to be able to live with someone like Joe for Wyatt, you know, that, that's a great situation just to yeah. kind of show him the ropes and, yeah. you know, let him get his feet wet. And, was that yeah. both your first experience, like junior? That, I mean, when well, you junior, left yeah. to live with... Yeah, so, yeah, but that's not a weird situation. You just you got to have a good lies, billet. Right? Yeah, that's I, what you do. You guys, first off, explain why they call it a billet. Because here, they, I don't, I don't, I don't know, even know. I, don't I, don't know I still don't know what it must is. mean. Something. <laughs> you're living with a family, and you're billeting with them. Yeah, you're yeah. billeting with them. They do everything yeah. for you. So you guys don't know what that means either. All right. Place to so, live. Hey, he's a Canadian one. I'm American. So. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you're from they, Canada. They, they cook and clean right. and do everything so, for us. And did you live with Army yeah. when you were a pro as well? So basically what he went through his first year, I went Same through my first, first year. year. So back and you never lived there together, you two? Only just in the summer. Just in the summer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did you have a boat then? No. Now we, no, what did we do? We had, how did we do? We bought jet skis. We Lake Minnetonka. Okay. What was your signing bonus? Over four years, 160 grand. No, no, no. You're like, when you first signed. Your signing bonus, yeah. What? My I'm signing bonus was, well, it was 40 grand, but it was 160 total over four years. Okay, what was yours? 180 over four. I didn't get one. Mine was, mine was 30. 30? That's it. 
total. Canadian. <laughs> Canadian. What was what that? About about? That was about 18. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, how well, times have changed. Change. And, now, and now, I mean, now, seven figures, right? For eighth over a stick. Do you they, guys you know. feel that you played at the wrong time now when you look at salaries? Right, look at salaries and look at the game. It's a different game, right? You know what? I, I think you could say that all the time, but either way, you know what? I, I feel fortunate. No, I, I do. And it's, you know, as far as the game is different, Lugs, but. It's like every sport's different. Look at football 10 years ago. Look at a, a basketball game 10 years ago. Yeah. Every sport's evolved, right? And I believe every player would have evolved growing up. You, you just learn to play a little differently. And uh, yeah, I, 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 no regrets. You, you always look there and see what guys are making, obviously, compared to what we made back then. And, you know, you used to say what we were making compared to what you made when you played, right? It's a fuck off. <laughs> it's, uh, it's all relevant, but... The game really, it's faster, but it hasn't changed a bunch. It's still the, it's so it's the same optics. Do you both feel that if you would have stepped in with the speed of the game now, you would have been the same players? You would have been. I, I think you've evolved a little differently, but yes, yeah. and at the end of the day, yeah. I think with the three of us, the hardest thing that we would adapt to is the rules. We, yeah. we all played the same but, similar but, you style. Know, we went right? through the new rules. Yeah. Well, not not to the point of the clutching and grabbing, though. And yeah, I, yeah, we did. We couldn't clutch, we couldn't grab. When they first came in, they were horrible. Yeah, you couldn't do anything. They you took guys, the emotion out of the game. They took everything out. <laughs> so you're gonna you're gonna, this is coming a guy that can actually skate, though. So yeah, yeah. The rest of us are well, clutching no, and grabbing. No, I, I believe you evolve with the game. You know, and I think every sport's the Your same. Your training would probably have been different you, as a you kid. Things differently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he used to say to me all the time that. He couldn't, he wouldn't have made it to the NHL. And this was 10 years ago, you know, when the game wasn't as it is now, but it was different, right? He said, I wouldn't have made it. 10 years ago. 15, maybe? What was it? I don't know. I said, uh, this is when we were working together, 15 years ago. I think we all would have so made the changes that yeah, I, see, I, just, you, I, I, think, I think we all still would have played. Yeah. I think, I think if you know how to play the game, you have the hockey sense to play the game, you, you still would have played. foot speed now. Right, like, but you, you, as, a kid, as a kid, you would have trained yeah. different. I don't know. You, I, I, I don't. <laughs> I mean, I've never. Hey, you don't think? No, you, because I, I grew up in a place where there, I didn't know anything about training. Like, I'm from a real small town. And I, but I think when you grow up in Canada, they're up, up to date more on what's going on. Maybe in Detroit, maybe you're more up to date. Where I'm from, where I was from, or still am. I don't know if we would have had the specialized, like now they all have, right. Matty, you run into it all the time. Well, Hatch, you you still own, do you have any pieces no, of sardine no, yet? No, I sold them about seven, eight months ago. Yeah, oh, you oh, that recently? Yeah, so I'm out. Is that more because no more kids are playing there or just had? You know what, COVID kind of. Oh yeah. You know, and then, then we started playing. I think the last two years I, I was, had the team. I was probably over there like six times, you know, like, or, or so it's just kind of... So you weren't, you weren't uh, a, a daily guy there all the time? Like you didn't... Well, I was, but then after COVID, I wasn't. So was it more just lost interest in it? Or? Yeah, yeah. 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 I want to, I do want to know though, your first coach and the pros in Minnesota. Who was it? Well, I know who it was. Your first re your your first impression of Bob Ganey as your coach. Why do you go, Woof. man? Even to this day, and when I saw him last year at Darien and uh, on Bob's thing there, he's still the most intimidating guy I know. And in what sense? Just when, when Bob speaks. Did his rep speaks. reputation precede that, or did you even know what Bob I, did as a player? I knew Bob how he played the game just from watching. Okay. Didn't know how he was as, you know, you hear now as how good of a captain he was, how good of a leader he was, what he did for everybody. When I got to Minnesota, Bob was just a coach. I didn't know anymore, you know. Clark was our GM at the time, and I just knew Bob as a coach. Looking back now, what Bob did for me in my career, he's a pretty powerful guy. Yeah. And I think you've said it best many times that when Bob's in a room and when Bob speaks, People listen. Yeah. Remember the old E.F. Hutton yeah. commercial? Same thing. Yeah. yeah. Same thing. How about you, Hatch? I'd say the same thing. That's what I was going to say. Intimidating. And it's not because it's just the way he came off. It's the way he didn't say anything. Always had a pretty serious look on his face. Uh, even when he talked to you, 
you kind of felt like, okay, yeah. now what? Can I go? Should I say something? You just never knew with Bob. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I thought he was a great coach. I, I feel like that I, I, uh, Maddie does here. I, I thought he was a great coach. He taught me a lot. But, uh, I mean, there's the story with Todd Harvey. Uh, a real quick one with uh, Todd Harvey. He uh, spent a summer with Bob Danny here in Dallas. And, uh, I didn't know this. And, okay. Yeah. And uh, Bob said, hey, Todd, you know, he, you want to go for a beer? And I think Todd had just turned 21. Well, that's never a good thing. And, and Todd was like, oh, this is great. Okay. You know what? Yeah. Well, what do you say? No, right? So you go. So Bob orders a beer. Todd doesn't know what to do. Todd orders a beer, and Bob literally picked up a newspaper and read a newspaper the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't say a word to him. Didn't say a word to him. And to hear Harv tell the story, he's like, What am I supposed to do now? What do you do, right? right? That's how Bob was, and I think we just never quite knew. And, and right, when we just saw him, uh, well, not just, shit. Like a year ago, or whatever. It's uh, the same it's the same, it's the same. It's the same exact way. He looks the same too. It's, yeah, it's, that's amazing. Amazing. Yeah. it's 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 hard. Like I've said this numerous times. Like everybody knows Scotty Bowman, one of the greatest coaches of all time. Bob Ganey is my Scotty Bowman because I mean I I had him as a captain when he was you know yeah, you running the room and and then you know the 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 coach I had him as a coach I guess in the first couple of years there in Mini and then then he became a. A general manager, and so I just I have a ton of respect for him. Uh, the way he goes about his business, um, the way he controlled the room as a captain, which you would know. And did he have conversations with you about being a captain? When no, nope, just let you be you. Was he the coach when you became captain? Or, or no, he, was the coach. Yeah. he was the coach. He was the coach. No, he never said a word to me. I didn't even know. Well, that it was it was that day. We, it was I remember the meeting because yeah, yeah. like, we all kind of sat next to each other, didn't yeah, we, in the locker room? Yeah, we were all in that little and, I, and we were just sitting there, didn't know what was coming, and all of a sudden it was like, and the uh, captain is going to be uh, Darren Hatcher, and I and I kind of I went, oh shit, and then I and then as you look around the room, all the other guys are going, oh shit. But the biggest one was him. Because yeah. you were sitting to my left, I believe. I did, yeah, he didn't say anything. You had no idea you no were going to be named captain. No, we and talked about this last year, too. Yeah, yeah and I did. Yeah. Yeah. No, I and and no. I remember there was some controversy. Because we, we, we like, went, it was the rotating. Better. We were rotating yeah. to see. Yeah. And then just out of the blue. I, I don't. Do you did think, everybody buy it just because Bob Ganey said it? No, like, he earned it. No, because because I, I truly believe that around, at least I can only speak for this organization, like, I look at Brendan, I look at Hatch, I look at Jamie Ben. I, I think there's a there's a, a way every team can have their own idea how they want their captain to be. Yeah. And I've looked at the captains around that have come through here, and I even look at Montreal and I should start there. The way that Bob was again, Bob was not a rah rah guy. There there's rah rah captains, they pump you up and all this other kind of stuff. Very seldom did Bo lose his mind. But when he did, it was like, holy shit. The way Bob was a captain, is it was how he played. And I, and I start with Darren, the way he played. He led the way he played. And, and then you, you, know, you move on to, to, to Brendan. Brendan, I, I don't, I've never played with Brendan, you guys have. Was Brendan a rah guy? Uh, you know what I mean? Or was he just... No, he was different. I think no, that's the same thing, just the way he played. It kind of comes from Bob's mentality. Hatch wasn't a rah rah guy. Hatch wasn't a yeller and screamer. Well, he put the string four words when, together at the time. <laughs> but when he stepped on the ice and played the way, like, yeah. Kelly Bookberg, go, like, enough already. Like, yeah. how many times can you beat one guy up yeah. and just yeah. keeps coming yeah. back? But yeah. Hatch knew what he had to do as a leader, and I think that's what Bob basically installed him, yeah. right? And that's why he was the leader he was. And that's why I look at Jamie. I mean, look, Jamie Ben, you've done interviews oh, with Jamie, Jamie and, yeah. uh, you know, and so, but Jamie leads by the way he plays. Yeah. And if we, most recently, everybody will go, oh, fuck, he's in Yeah. Like that, but that, that's a guy that leads. And I don't know if it's an identity this organization has going from Ganey to, you know, GM to GM to GM. But, but I, and I, I personally, I love it because there were times when I sat there with, with Hatch and I'm like, yep. Captain's here tonight. You know what I mean? Like, if you don't you don't want to. And from the other side, because there's been other captains similar to Hatch that that I played against, and you could tell they weren't there they, they, that particular night. They they weren't there. 
there. Well, and I'm like, and I think you get in there in between periods, you're like, don't wake that fucking guy up. He's not here tonight. That's good. Speak to the attest of it is our supporting cast growing up was pretty good. Yeah. With Ludwig, Tenorti, and guys like Keener. that. That Keener, we just Carbo. we followed that lead, right? right? We had we had the guys in place who they knew what it took to win or to be successful. Yeah. Did that, Bob ever talk to you about the physical side of your game? Even the fighting the only, side of your the game. The only thing he talked to me about is he, he really didn't want me to fight, and that's really why, yeah. He never said at the right he time. He told me I remember yeah at the right time. Yeah, yeah. I could see that. But I, I I don't know who I fought. You know, it might have been Mike Peluso or something. Yeah. Honestly, which was some reason that's in my mind. Yeah. And Bob grabbed me and said, "You know what? Why did you fight him?" And I said, "Right." And I like I don't know. It's just, no, but it I happened. agree it's with that. Happen, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. And then he. Kind of made that you, point. If you're to gonna if you're gonna fight somebody, in my opinion, you go grab Brendan Shanahan, Shanahan. Yeah. somebody like that, yeah. Messier, yes. you know, those yes. kind of guy. Don't. Yeah, that's the only thing really. Uh, that's why we got Charles. Right. You no. Know, yeah. Now Rick Wilson talked me all a lot about the. Uh, and you guys have about had, physical and yeah. mean and you know. Which was where I was gonna go next with Wills. I mean, unbelievable. Rick Wilson. He's our D coach. He's my coach in college. Uh, so I've had Wills for a, a, a lot. But talk about a father figure. That's what it was for me. I thought, you guys, Matty? Yeah, R Wills, again, he was my first year until the year I left. Yeah, he was there. Yeah. He, he, he was the best thing about Rick is he protected us as defensemen. I still remember the one game I forget who we were playing. And Hitch was yelling down at the fence. And Big Rick just stood up, put his back to the wall, and wouldn't let wouldn't you, you let Hitch yell at us. <laughs> yeah, so you know that. Hey, that's you that's told Hitch to fuck off. Yeah, yeah. Hitch, yeah. fuck off. And but, yeah. Yeah. Wills was a I got such it. a personal yeah. guy, but he also had that fire in him. When he got pissed, you yeah. knew it. And it was almost like you said, a father for a year, where we all came back and we didn't want to let Wills down. Like he was our guy. That's what it was. He was our guy. Yeah. Like he had our back, and we wow. knew that. And that's why, you know, we had so much success with, you know. Me, Hatch, Zuby, Sid, you know, we brought in Chambers and guys yeah. like that. It was yeah. fucking, that, that was our guy. He had our back. Do you, do you remember the Doug Smolik when Wills came in and it was all fired up? Punch him in the nose? Yeah, I don't know. And hold him up. <laughs> yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, hold him so he doesn't fall. Isn't that what it said? Well, he, Wills was all fired up and he came over to Dougie's Smolik. And he was just kind of sitting there. And you fucking go up to him and punch him right in the nose. And he punched him right in the nose. He didn't mean to it. And Dougie's eyes just sort of <laughs> swell off, and tears were coming up. Didn't say a word. And, but you, you didn't see you didn't see Wills lose his composure much. But you knew when yeah. he did. It was kind of like a Bob Gainey thing. Like, yeah, you know, yes, yeah. You know, you knew when it was. Oh. Was he your head coach in college? No, he was my he D was coach. Your defensive coach in college. <laughs> yeah, he was my D coach. Wills was? Yeah. I didn't know that. All this yeah, and he, that. you know, it was the same thing. Everybody's like, well, blocking shots and all that other kind of shit. Like, Wills would, Wills would take the defenseman at the end of practice. He would stand at the blue line. We would line up at the hash marks on the wall, and we'd have to skate to the middle of the ice, go down, and Wills would drive shots at us. You know, and that, that's kind of where you, where that kind of started there. But, yeah, he was a... You know, again, you know, and Landon, his yep. son, played in Arizona, and Landon's a big horse. I remember the first time that his son played, Landon was in um, uh, Arizona time. Phoenix, I think, at the time, it was called. And I just kind of looked around, and I didn't even really know it. But I'm like, oh, shit, Wilson. <clears throat> I didn't, you know, I'm not the guy that looks at the lineup sheet all the time. I don't fucking... Everybody was Gretzky when I played. Everybody was way <laughs> better than me. <clears throat> I just... Turned around to Wilson. I said, that, "Any relation?" He goes, "Yeah, it's my kid." I'm like, "Oh shit, I didn't know that." Anyway, a few shifts later, came back and I was just joking around. And I said, "I'm gonna run your kid," and uh, he goes, "Go ahead, do it." And, you know, landed young. Well, a couple shifts later, I did, and I landed right on my ass. And I came back. Wilson's like a brick shit house. I came back, and Wilson just standing on the bench with his arms crossed, smiling. He goes, "I said you didn't tell me." He goes, "No, I just wanted you to find out for yourself." <laughs> well, he's yeah. built like Brad. Oh yeah, yeah. big, yeah. Yeah. yeah, like a football player build. You know, and yeah. that's how his son is. Yeah. yeah. So he talked about uh, blocking shots and, and how Wilson was showing them and everything and how to block shots, but. It seems to me like he was the last guy that blocked shots like he did. Am I wrong about that, Hatch? Do you remember others? Did you guys try to emulate what he was doing as a shot block? Oh, no, they were trying to do exactly what I did. They're the opposite. Is different. The opposite. I was yeah. like, I'm not Matty did. did. No. Matty did. Matty, Matty, Matty did. did. Hatch didn't have to. Yeah. But, you know, that's yeah. to the point to the game. Shot blocking right, I'm putting that TV, there was football. 
Shot blocking's at an all-time high right now in playoffs. Oh my god! That's all yeah. we talked yeah. about: shot blocking, yeah. finishing your hits. Being, that's no. all, it, and that's why I say you would have evolved. And the game hasn't changed. It that hasn't much. changed yeah. that much. Yeah. It still, has, you still have to block still, shots to yeah. be successful. The rules, only so many the rules right? yeah. There's only so many fundamentals, right? so many fundamentals of hockey. So when you guys were coaching and doing your thing and you're doing your program, did you guys? Go down that road with your players about blocking shot. You have uh, younger kids. When I was so coaching not. the pro guys, I did. When I coached the juniors guys, yes. yeah, not uh, not the young kids. Did you have to? Was it hard to get them to buy in? Yep, hundred percent. That level? Yeah, they don't want to do it. Nobody yeah. wants to do it. No. You know, we were. I don't know if we were just too slow to get out of the way, but hell, you taught me at a yeah, younger dude. age. If you actually get hurt, you've done something wrong. Like it, there was an art to it, and we knew it. Well, you can get hurt, but you don't talk about it. You never yeah. see so many flamingos, lads. Kids yeah. really? purposely get out of the way. They don't want to get hit. Like, it hurts. You know, like, I used to play in front of the night on the power play, right? I loved it. Yeah. Chance to get a goal, right? Yeah. They did a kid at these ages we're talking about to stand in front of the net. They always want to be off to the side, trying to tip it. Yeah. I'm going. And they just they try to get them to do it. It's. It's hard pushing them into the fight sometimes. Yep. Yeah. Again, you can't teach the will to compete. Yeah. You either have it or you don't. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, that thing. You can't teach will. It's either right. you got it or you don't. And how quick, uh, as, a, as a guy who's close to juniors and even young kids, how, how quickly do you see it? Like, can you tell, you know, very early in a kid's development, he might have a chance? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah, and I guess like the, we know the game well enough where... Some, know, some kids, yeah. Some yeah. kids you can just look at and say, that kid's oh, going to yeah. be a hockey player. Yeah. And, oh, know, yeah. we're, and the flip side, you can look at it, you know, smile. this kid has yeah. no chance. <laughs> yeah. You get excited about it, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's funny how you gravitate, but you almost want to spend more time with that sure. kid, right? You give yeah. him You're that chance. Yeah. Because you know. Like, I got Seth Jones. Huh? So I had Seth. Okay. Seth Jones here with our U.S. Yeah. 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 And more first you see the size. Oh, there's nothing in there. You guys don't know Seth Jones? Yeah, oh, are we looking for some more of Aikman's beer? Yeah, you By got the way, what, when were you drafted? What round? What what pick me? Eighth. eighth overall. When were you? Eighth, eighth overall. What, what, what is this beer called? Eight. Oh, eight. Oh, how about that? They're empty eight. Yeah, excuse me. We'll get some more. Yeah, okay, we'll get right on that. Yeah, we'll get some more. Yeah, they're going to bring some. Hannah. Dave. Can we get four more of these when you get a chance? The eight, the Aikman eight beer. The Aikman eight beer. Have you had it? It's a good beer. No, I haven't had it. Uh, oh no, you guys haven't had it yet. Fresh hops, and I don't know. Any, Aikman talks about it on the radio all the time. Hey, I want to know when you guys started playing together. You know, the one thing I will always remember about you two. Oh, you want to put it on your tab too, would you please? First year, um, second year. No, this is second. When you when you guys started playing together, and I, I'm a, I'll fast forward, and then you guys go back. To when, you know, we were we were getting good, right here, and there were matchups. How you guys looked forward to the matchups? Not always. Yeah, but I'll tell you what. I'll tell you. No, I understand that when the Forsbergs and guys are like that, were out there. But you thrived off of that stuff. So yeah. tell me about when you guys first got together as a parent, and and how and when was that? And were you ever Thank split you up until you both got moved? I think it was our second year. I think our second year in Dallas, right? Yeah. So my fourth year, your third year, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, we're both agreeing on that. And you know, and this goes well, to wait, now, what do you mean agreed on what? Well, that's about when we got paired together. Yeah. Oh, okay. Our second year okay. in Dallas. So his we, third year. We both. Third third year. Year. So that's a hitch thing. That's a Hitchcock thing, or was Bob still behind? Both. No. Bob was still there. Okay. The first year. Yeah, he was still. Bob was there. I remember the. Oh, I still remember the conversation. Yeah, but I just want to pretend like you're not here. <laughs> I'm not. I'm never here. Yeah, I'm never really here, present. but not here. Yeah, I'm not yeah. present. I remember the first game they put us together was in Winnipeg. That was oh, Lonnie scored Lonnie, uh, yeah, four goals. Right? Scored four goals and did the fifty. And Bob, Wait, what? Whoa, whoa, what happened? Bob had a meeting with both of us in Winnipeg. That's right. Said uh, we're going to put you guys together as our new. Are we still in mini though? I don't need, no. It took two years to put we're us back shut, together. We're shut down pair. So go at her and have some fun. We were both dash four. Solani scored four. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we might want to you know, you know, our shut down yeah. yeah. Getting back to it a bit, though, that's where Rick Wilson did a really good job. Because he would grab us, and, and he would explain, you know, he would say, listen, guys, if you guys are even or better, we're going to win. We have a very, well, very high chance of winning. But people don't understand, like, when you're playing against some of the best players yeah. in, right. on the planet, yeah. to be even is Right, and, that, and that's how Rick would explain those guys. If you guys are even or better, our chances of winning... 
Yeah. Go way up. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. If you're it's best, like, the best mind that you know, I don't always, want to say our job was easier, but we knew every night what we had night. to do. Yeah. There was no, it was black and white. Hey, if Forsberg and Sackick or... Going in the Philly and playing yeah. that's the Legion of Doom. Or, if they don't score, our team yeah. has a really good chance to win. And that was our philosophy. Yeah. Again, I knew I wasn't a power well, that, guy. I wasn't. That's why I say that, because I, as a parent, I watched when we were in those games. Yeah. And, and you get, you guys, you for sure. And I don't, I don't have to really give a shit, but, but I think I could see you looking down to the other bench. Because a lot of times, we, we'll, we'll look down and see who's up. You can see the coaches tapping these guys. You kind of know the rotation. And, like, you're, you're perking up. You know, like, you're, you're popping up and you're ready to go, and Wills didn't need to say anything. <clears throat> so that's why, and I think that's a sign of great players when they, they want that challenge. They want to be out there against Well, you think players. about the core we had. With Hatch and I together, you know, either Zuby and Sid or you and, and Zuby Lutz and, Bundy. and Lutz and Bundy, everybody knew their role. Yeah. There was no hiding it. Right. Everybody do your role, we're going to be pretty good. Which, on, on that note, it's hard getting across to kids. This is who you're going to be. This is how you're going to make it. You're not going to score. Johnny, you're not scoring 32 goals next year. Well, they can't handle it. You can it. win face-offs yep. in this zone. You guys have problems with that? Yes. Yeah. Well, Matty, you don't. Well, you haven't had a big dose of that, the, right? The biggest thing for, like, the junior hockey ranks is everybody coming into the Western League or the Ontario League. I they would all, assume it's harder there. They've always level. been the best. Yeah. Like, coming right. out of junior hockey or minor hockey, going into junior hockey, those players have always been the best of the best. And now they're 16 years old playing against 19- and 20-year-olds. You're not the best in it, and they can't handle that. Like you're, you're leaving, you know, minor hockey scoring 50 goals, and you might be put in a situation in major junior hockey where you're a third or fourth liner. And not that they can't handle it. The bigger part is the parents can't handle it, and, and that's huge. But you had to go through the same thing, didn't you? I mean, I have to think coming up, you were always the best, at least in Pee Wee and Midget. All that type yeah, of thing. For the most part. Yeah. I, I came out of junior hockey as an offensive defenseman. Okay. And Bob told me Holy if I wanted shit, to play in the league. league? <laughs> yeah. Bob told me if I wanted to stay in the league, I would have to adjust my role. Okay. It was a pretty, so that's pretty easy adjustment. You know, Keith Carbonell was probably the best story of that. In juniors, he was 200 Carbonell, points. 100, 180 yeah. points. I think he had almost 200, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah and then he, he bought in. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and that was, I think it's a little bit easier to buy in in Montreal. Just no, that, that's you but you know what though? I, I swear, like he he must have realized too, or someone talked to him and said, "This is I got to find my niche," you know. And this is the guy who was up with two hundred points. Carl said it, right? That's what I and thought. he said that he goes, "I that's came out I of thought. junior, I was this and this." Yeah. And he goes, "But I wasn't going to be that guy." Yeah. Yeah. And and look what he turned into. You know, he turned into a what three times sulky guy and. You know, but but Carbo had a different. Carbo's got a different mentality. Yeah, I'll have another one. But you're, Apparently, we re, we already drank Troy out of his own beer. So we we need to get some more out here. But you're exactly right. Getting it's at all levels, even the pro level. Trying to get someone to buy into that role, yep. it's not easy. It never will be easy. Like regardless, even if they're going to play in the NHL. Now you ask most American League guys. Well, the answer is yes. I'll do whatever it takes. Patch, when you were as an owner. Did you ever come down and try to do that, or do you allow your coaches to do that? You know what I'm saying? When you're just when you're not a coach. Well, that, that you know what? When you're not when a you coach, the that's coaches. what the GM. We had a GM, and that was his job. Okay. To make sure, you know, it's a little, well, it's the same, because you got to develop your young players, right? So there's that fine line between playing them, teaching them the right way, take the nice time away when you need to take it away. You know, and, and, but our GM did a great job with it. Did you guys feel that you had to win? Or like when you say it's about development, well, as, there, an, as, a, as, as a, an owner, you have to win, right? Yeah, you need money to come in. I yeah. mean, you want your fans there. So the you know, but the best way to do it is to get that development, develop players. If you can get a good development thing going, you're going to be relatively good every year. So, do you guys do anything like some of the? <clears throat> they found creative ways here in the NHL to when they're when they're going to be a, a team that's rebuilding. They'll call it retool. They'll they'll send a letter to their to their fans and say they'll be not really upfront with them but hey we're not going to be very good for the next two or three years bear with us we're going to do this you guys ever do that in junior no or, no <laughs> no <clears throat> no yeah you don't ask them to hey just kind of hang in there kind of thing no but you know what most of the fans do know but in juniors you, like if you're rebuilding it's a one-year turnaround you know it's a much faster process yeah 
So you can trade, you can get draft picks, you can get younger players. The, the process is a year at the moment. Yeah. Okay. How long's the longest you keep a kid in two months? Well, if he's an under or over, you, I think five years. Five. Okay. You can come in at 16 and leave as an overager. In general, it's four. You get the few kids that might be five. General For the most four. part, the kids that are staying that long, are they going to make it? Well, you know what? Some of them do. Some of them the don't. The percentages are lower, I'm assuming. Yeah. They usually start in the coast and go to the American. They have yeah. to work their way up. The high-end guys are going from yeah, major the, the junior to NHL, but the other guys got to work their way up. So... They both coach. Yeah. We've talked about different guys. Um, talked about catch a little bit. You guys don't live under a rock. Mike Babcock. Babcock. <laughs> we talked about this last week. Yeah. There's some guys that like to hit him in the head with a rock. Right. Yeah. But any thoughts on the whole Babcock? Well, I'll go first. I know guys that played for him. But you, I look. I'm not you, kidding. You, guys, you never played for him. No, I, I know that. Maybe you missed. I them. know very prominent guys that played for him. Yep. And hated him. Thought he was an asshole. And but they're elite players. They're too, elite right? players. Yep. Yes. And then, but you know what? I always said, and I, and I don't know him, so I don't want to go there. I just go from what I've heard. But you know, I know he was great in juniors. And then you know what? Like he won in Detroit, but a lot of coaches. With that lineup? With that lineup. Yeah. With yeah, he told me last week a monkey could have coached that 08 eight team to the. To and the they Stanley probably could. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and the, you know, the Team Canada Golds, yes, yeah, so you have to coach, you have to manage the players, but you know what? They're expected every year to win the gold, right? Yeah. And Maddie, you, you coach it. I mean, the, the kids, the America, yeah. or the East Coast League, things like that. Have you. Well, when you're, I mean, at the time, I don't think it was as prevalent as it is now. But were you ever worried about any? Did you even think about any of that? Did you have no. to think about that? Like you do now? No, you have to think now before you speak. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like when you walk into a dressing room, even as you know, in between periods now with our U14s, you've got to think about what you're saying compared to 15 years ago when I was coaching the, you know, the East Coast, where you just walked in and talked to them. Hey, you call a guy out or whatever, but society's changed. Let's be honest. You, you know, let's look at cell phones or see what these guys are doing. There's that line that uh, you just can't cross. And I think that line's a lot bigger than what we all expected it ever would be. And, you know, some guys struggle with it. Uh, but, you know, black and white, you have to watch what you're saying nowadays. You really do. Well, do you, that's you point find that in other sport? I mean, because I'm not every, dialed in. To... Every sport. Absolutely every sport. But the point I was making with him last week on Babcock, and I don't know him either. I'm a Red Wings, you know, grew up a Red Wings fan, so I was happy that he led him to the club in 08 and all that stuff. But it just seems to me there's a there's a part of it that might be, to your point, Maddie, these kids that just can't take it anymore, right? Yeah. Back in the day, I mean, Hitch was a jerk a lot of times, as we've all no, to yeah, you guys. Like, and I coach youth hockey too, and my brother coaches youth hockey. You know what? It's the age of entitlement, and that's just the reality of it. You know, and you, and you have to treat them differently. And I don't care what you say, though. What Babcock, what Bob Babcock did to uh, Mitch Marner was just wrong. Yeah, oh. like that was wrong 25 years ago. That's not what he did. Because the team just turned out. You know. But uh, it's, to me, there's no excuse for that. But, but yeah, it's, it's the age of entitlement. You got to treat players differently. Now, do you, Maddie, do you guys in, in Canada is it safe sport the same thing? In yeah, we, it's called respect in sport, but it's the same okay. thing. You got to watch thing. the videos. And... Actually, you know about safe sport, right? You yep. know that whole pro. Because I got to do it every year. So, and I ace it. Yeah. Um, is that something they can do in the NHL? I mean, with these coaches, can you? I don't think it would hurt. It's basically, it's really not, it's all, I mean, again, I don't it's know. just giving you baselines is all. Is it really good. saying, can you do it? All you're going to do is take a test and go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do they not do any training? I don't know. Sensitivity that's training or something. That's like what that? I'm, oh, they I'm, must, right? I would bet they do. In this day it's, and age, I think they must. It'd be wrong. We can cut this out of the podcast. But it's sad to say sensitivity training, isn't it? Well, that's that's all, I, I believe, I, I, I bet you, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they have to do some t- form some, of support. I, there have to be something mandated. There How do they hold them accountable? You just saw that being that player. Yeah. You just saw well, you take, yeah. you know what? You take his job away. One, you, you take their ice away. Take whose rights away? Uh, ice. Oh, take their ice away. You make them accountable. You take yeah, their ice away. Aren't they, don't. 
doesn't a player have the, enough power now because of the money that they make to go and say, hey, he's only taking my ice away because he doesn't like the way I dress or the like I... Well, I don't know why anyone lets him do it because of the way you dress. It's not. It's the way you play. It's your attitude. It's what you do. So instead of maybe yelling and screaming at him, if you don't think the kid can handle it, you take their ice away. And you know what? Hopefully you have a good GM and a good owner who back you. Yeah, and I'll say this. If the owner truly believes in the coach, right? right. If he truly believes in Babcock or truly believes in the coach, and you as a player come to me as the owner and say, he's taking my ice time away because it's sad, I say, I trust my coach. And well, go talk, don't come to me and go talk to your coach. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's I think that's what the good owners would do. You know, here in town, uh, with the football team here, there's been an owner for all these years that basically lets the players come to him and bitch about the coach. And that's one of the things that's undermined the Cowboys organization, I think, for 25, 27 years that they haven't made it back to the Super Bowl is because you don't know who's in charge, right? And and you gotta, man, you gotta well, give- Don't we know who's in charge? Huh? How do we not know well, who's in charge we, here? We do I know. Think I know. <laughs> yeah, we, do, we do know, but the thing is, it's supposed to be the coach, right? Yeah, I would, I mean, but that's never gonna happen here as long as- no. But again, a lot of guys don't have the cachet to be able to go straight to the owner. So they got to listen to the coach. And then these other guys have the cachet that they can listen, you know, they can go straight to the owner. And so, you know, it's just this convoluted thing that nobody so, knows what they're doing. Are you, Hatch, are you a Lions fan or? Yeah, you know what? I've honestly always been a Lions fan. Yeah. Maddie, do you have a football team in the States? It'd Not be really? the Cowboys, but all of a sudden the Rat and Raven Denver, that CU team is kind of fun to watch. Well, it's a bad time to be a fan. Oh, so you're a prime bad time. Fan. You're a prime time fan. Oh boy. I yeah, see, we we've I had this conversation glasses. the last couple of weeks. Could you play for a coach like Prime? Like Deion Sanders? Have you have you watched enough hatch of I I know the I know how he is, but I guess he's a, you know what you never hear a bad word about him. You never hear his players say anything bad about him. Players love him. They talk yeah. prime time for a reason, yeah, right? Yeah. Like he, he loves he does what he does. He doesn't care what people think. Yeah. Players, from what I know, love him. But you know, in, until you're in a room, you don't know. But you never hear anything. So, so you're yeah. saying he's different than Hitch. <laughs> In what way? Anybody want to answer that? <laughs> well, we took our respect in sport. We can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, sum up Hitch. You guys, sum up Hitch. Maddie, sum him up. Uh, probably the best X and O guy I've ever seen with a way to motivate. Um, for me, well, Hitch, he motivate Hitch was special because he knew every one of us individually. And what you needed was different than what Hatch needed, and what Hatch needed was completely different than what Holly needed. Where do you think you got part of that from? Probably Bob. Yep. Right? That's that was, what I think. That's, they, I mean, knew, I'm not taking anything H away from Hitch. Hitch knew how to motivate you. Yeah. Was it a kick in the ass, or was it taking you for a, a coffee? Yeah. And that's why we were successful. Again, it goes, hey, for me, Bob started this whole thing. That's where it all, yeah. you know, great things happen because of who our leader was. Hatch? What you? I always thought along great with him. I, you know, I, I kind of had to, right? Yeah. You know, uh, I always thought along good with him. Uh, definitely, X's and O's of being prepared. He lo he loved the game, right? Or he loves the game, and yeah. like through like uh, he lives and breathes and drinks game it. of hockey. Like, and, and you probably hear that a lot, but this guy truly does. So, like he. Uh, and, uh, but yeah, you know, I think his communication with players is tough sometimes. I, I think that's, and personally, I think that's why Hitch kind of struggled as the became a younger league, is because he had a hard time communicating with young players. Yeah, and, and that's that's what I, I truly believe. I, I think that you know when he even in Philly, I had him a little bit, and you could see it. Then he went to Columbus, and I, what did he last in Columbus a year? Or yeah, not long. Like, I, I, yeah. And they had a really young team. I, yeah, and I think he had a hard time communicating. In a year back here. Well, then he went to Edmonton. You know, he, he, yeah, right. he, like, he didn't love. He didn't love our young players here. Right. He never did. You know. Uh, and, uh, no. How about well, the shit that you said? I would say that's the only knock on him. That, that would be the only knock on him, though. It's just it's, his communication. You it's got to with the younger players. Older players like us, we could handle it. Right. Okay, Hitch, right. Already. And you may be, I don't know if I talked to you last time we did this, but you may be surprised uh, a few years ago when Hitch was in St. Louis, he called me in the summer. And, and I talked, I think I, I think I talked about this with the podcast. It's just not. He called me and, and he said, uh, 
I, I'd like, to, he goes, Lutz, I need you to write, your, we had a little chat before, and then he says, Lutz, I want you to write me a paper. I said, what? And uh, I remember saying to him, Hitch, do you know who you called? Like, I, I thought maybe he didn't know he called me. <clears throat> and he said, uh, no, I, I, I know who he is. He goes, I, I need you to write me a paper. I'm like, what do you mean? And he goes, I want you to know how, how did you handle me? And remember, I had to fucking, I was in that office more in the mornings, and, and he, he would vent about this guy, this guy, and he, he, he was just trying to find a, a conduit to, the, to this guy or that guy. So what do you mean? He goes, how did you handle me? And I said, well, I'm not sure what you're asking me. And he goes, at that time, when I, I was ranting, and he knew what he, you know, how he was. What he, long story short, he was trying to figure out how to talk to the new generation, the new player. Because he knew I'm, because I remember when I went to Kalamazoo after I was done, and Bob had me go there and work with the minor league team. And I remember doing stuff on the board, and this is a long time ago, and there was, three or four guys that were just hanging around the board when we were done. I was like, here's how we're going to break out. Here's how we're doing our D-zone stuff. And I, I turn around, I look, and there's three guys standing at the board yet. I'm like, skate over, and hey, what, what's up? You didn't understand that? No, I got it, but why do you want us to go there? I'm like, what? Well, why do you want me to go up over here? Because I told you to. That, yeah. That's how, that's the position. That's how yeah. They just wanted to know why. It didn't mean that they didn't want to do it. They just wanted to know why. why. I think that's where he was coming from. Because I'm having a hard time getting through to the younger generation, well, so to speak. So. You know, and I think for us, we're all working with younger kids. And yes. because for me, I've talked about this before. I mean, they are different. You know, different. And, yep. and so but you, I think anytime you, you tell someone why, it, it, it just brings it all together. Maybe maybe what you need to do as a coach is tell them why right in the beginning. Yeah. Explain, this is why here's we're why we're doing it. Yeah, so I, yeah, I, yeah. yeah. And I and now that you said it just that, brings it I don't together, think we do you know? that. And it could be something stupid, you know. You say, "Hey, I want yeah. you to stand three feet off the wall." And the yeah. kid looks at you, "Why?" And if you explain to him why, yeah. you're like, "Oh." Well, the more important, you got to show him. This is oh it. no, that that's it. Yeah. <clears throat> I actually tried to create a YouTube channel a year ago. You can create your own YouTube, own YouTube channel, apparently. Yeah, and, and I because I you can't find them. You don't know where they are. I'm sure you're on YouTube. But if you can <laughs> if you can figure that shit out. You can send it to them, yeah, and they'll watch it right away. So we got it. We have that huddle in Instat. No, oh, that's what we have. As soon as that game's over, you just hit and it sends yeah, all the. And I'm glued to that thing every morning because yeah. I got to do the same bullshit and draw circles and. But it's so and, easier to show them than just oh, yeah. talk. Oh right. yeah, then they get it because they get it. Yeah, but which is kind of hard because like you're supposed to get it as you see it happening. But it is. You, I mean, you again, know, it you is show them it. enough, enough, enough. Yeah. Eventually, if they they'll get it or they don't. Yeah, but you, you do have to continue. It doesn't to matter. It doesn't really matter how they get it. Just it's our job to make sure right. they get it. Yes. And the point is, they always say the eye in the sky doesn't lie, right? I mean, you okay? You tell them. Yeah. Here it is. Look right there. But that you know, you know, the problem with what I find with our players is that I've always tried to use a player, like if it's Maddie, I would go up to one of our guys and say, "Listen, I want you to watch how he plays." Don't watch how Miro Haskin in place because you're not going to be Miro Haskin. Right. You're you're going to be this. But and I'll, but I, I lead off by saying, well, you watch games and stuff like that. Do you watch hockey? Do you watch the NHL? Oh yeah. I said, well, did you watch a game last night? Well, no, I watched a highlight. If you watch a highlight, they watch it on YouTube. Yeah. The problem with YouTube is. It's the best players right. in the world yeah. making the hardest plays it's, in the world. It's, it's, and it's hard to tell them, you're not going to be that guy. What I want you to do is watch that guy. I want you to watch Matt Pachuk play. Very very few kids watch hockey. Yeah, right. Watch a full game. Wow. Yeah, they want the highlights. don't get attention span, do they? Yeah, it's yeah. the day of video games, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's hard enough wow. to get them outside to do something. I don't like Yeah. So you guys were talking about Hitch treated you, how Hitch treated you. He was telling me um, with his kids, he treats them different. This guy's, you know, kind of cocky and confident. He can holler at him, and this guy's kind of meek, and he'll put an arm around him. Is that how you coach too, Maddie? Did you, I mean, because, again, I say the best coaches are psychologists too. Yeah, you have to know what yeah. player. I, I coached all three of his kids. Oh, yeah. You had to treat all three. Because I wouldn't. Yeah. But no, I they wouldn't listen to me. Had, yeah. You had to treat all of them different because they're different kids, different personalities. CJ wanted to be the guy that needed a kick in the ass to go play hard, right? He was that guy where, you know, Trevor's one that you had to talk to. Yeah. Right? And Tyler, Tyler was Tyler. He just yeah. played the game. Yeah. So, um, but that's, you know, signs of a good coach is knowing who your players are. 
Yeah, did yeah you, you have to. Well, I was talking to. We were this weekend where we were playing in. We were in Pittsburgh, and I ended up running into the head scout for the Ottawa Senators. We, we got into that this whole topic, and he asked me how do I. I said, I've learned so much just from. I can tell on the first two days of practice, just watching how a kid practices and when he do drills and when he loses the puck, does he give a shit? Or does, does it piss him off and he stops on a puck and goes and gets it? Does he go to, you know, all the little things that we were all brought up with. And then when I see that, I'm like, okay, I can talk to that kid. The guy that plays in straight lines and is a shithead, I can talk to him like old school. The other ones that the toe drag kind of do this. Oh yeah, don't get me going on that one. <clears throat> the whole toe drag and, and and in the wrong areas of the ice, you got to go approach that kid differently because that's his mentality. And so you got to kind of talk him into what he needs to do to be successful at where it is. That, that's the way I approach. It. All right. So speaking of him being in Pittsburgh, he texted me last weekend. Oh shit! I should have never did that. Yeah, I'm in Pittsburgh. I've taken three pictures. I'm out in the butt. I've taken three pictures with people who thought I was Kevin. I was Green. in a Walmart. So here's here's <laughs> Kevin. Here's Kevin Green. Kevin was there. Yeah. There's lots. Here's the problem. Kevin died at age 58. <laughs> oh, so I'm saying I don't know. These are the greatest Steelers fans we've ever heard of. They didn't know. But I get the the, the resemblance is there though, isn't it? I mean, home Saturday. Yeah. Where like we always go, well, as soon as we land, wherever we go, we find the closest Walmart so the kids can go in, get their shit for their rooms yep. and snacks and whatever. I got in there. I went, actually, I went there. This is like 7 o'clock in the morning. Oh. I didn't, we didn't go there that night. I'm in there and I'm walking around. And all of a sudden, I see this tap on the show. I got this woman. And she kind of looked at me and said, yeah. And she goes, play, play for the Steelers, huh? I said, no, no, no. I said, different sport. <laughs> and then she followed me over to the milk thing where I was. She goes, no. I said, yeah, no, I'm different. And then she goes, no, you're Kevin. I said, no, that's my brother. I said, I'm thinking she knows oh, my family. Yeah, got gotcha. And I said, no, 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 I'm Craig. She goes, Craig. She goes, no, you're Kevin Green. I know you guys like to kind of be under the radar and stuff like that. I said, no, ma'am, I'm not. Anyway, so we leave. I don't get to the other end of Walmart, and here comes another guy and his wife kind of pushing their carts at me. The same thing. And I'm thinking, and I don't know that's what why you should. That's why you should Instacart. My what? You should Instacart. What does that mean? Like when we, next weekend, when we're all in Fargo. What'd you call it? Instacart? Instacart. What does that mean? You call Costco and they just deliver it right to your hotel. It's done. No, see, that's how you spoil these little shits. <laughs> we, we make them go in, get their own food, get I'll their call. own cards, check out on their own with mom and dad's credit card. They check out right. on their own, get their own snacks and stuff like that. you got to teach them something. See, you're part of the problem. Well, yeah. I don't want any I know I'm not walking around as a dead guy in, <laughs> in Pittsburgh. <laughs> dead man walking. Yeah, dead man walking. Yeah. Yeah. Matty, you're your toughest guy to play against. Peter Forsberg. Hatch? Uh, it's funny. I'm... I have to say the same guy. Yeah, I can, I can see that. And that's probably because you, you guys had to play against him all the time. Yeah, we had the seven-game series against them. Yeah. And okay, now, now tell everybody why. Because not only, not only was he... What did he do that made it so tough? First of all, he's, when he was playing, he's one of, I, I think one of the most skilled players in the world. But with that said, he would also run you run you over. He, go into a yeah, right. he loved the reverse shoulder in the yeah. corner. He would stick you. He would... He was trying to hurt why. you. You try to hurt you just like we're trying you, to hurt you. You almost had to treat him a little differently. Yeah. Because no, you, you did. Do. And you didn't close on him as good or no, as hard because you were like, yep. here it comes, right? Yep. You had yep. to contain him. Yeah. Yep. What about uh, what about Eric Lindro? Like, did you play? I played junior you were in to Philly, next but, but when you went to Philly, was he done then? Yeah, he was, Okay. Yeah. Did, what were your... Well, I played juniors against Lynn Jones as well. But, you know, we only played him up twice a year, right? And it was always hard going in there, going into Philly. You know, we had to play against him every shift, you know? Yeah. But uh, to, me, to me, it's Forsberg, man. Like, he, uh, Same reason for you? Yeah, he's... You didn't know you were you going to get something back. He wasn't... He wasn't going away, yeah. right? And as much as he knew he had to score goals to produce, he knew that he had to play at that little bit of a bite or an edge to get to where he wanted to get to. So if I asked you, uh, sum up Brett Hull. Hull was special. I think it was funny because we learned things about playing against those top guys, how they had their, like Hull never, never looked at the net. When he looked at the net, you knew he wasn't shooting. Just little things like that were, you know, 
played against Gretzky or guys like that where you could see them think in the game where the other guys had to work to play the game. And Hully was one of those guys that he knew what position to be into to be able to score goals. Was he, was he the same? Do you have the same opinion of Hully as a teammate as, or I, you would as an opponent? Hully wanted to be your best friend on the ice. He would talk well, to yeah, you. Of course. He would talk yeah. to you at the face-off dots. He would and joke and around. Yeah. Joke around, and then he would try to just lull the as and then and there he is with like the one time. And he'd go bar and down and be the game winner. You know, yeah. he had. He was, I think he was a great passer. He's an underrated passer. Everyone, yeah. he scored oh, goals. Right? I bet you if you ask how unbelievable he, passer. I kept, same conversation about Hatch and I. He didn't like playing with us. Well, because you had the end. You know who you like playing with. Yeah. We didn't, have, we didn't like Puck. Zuby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everybody loves playing with Zuby. He liked yeah. playing with two guys. Yeah. Zuby and Moe. Yeah. Let me tell you who the happiest guy was to play with Zuby. Moi. <laughs> I can, and I knew better. So I get the Puck. There's Zuby. I give it to Zuby right there. There could be absolutely nobody else open on the ice, and he'd look at me, and he still wouldn't give it to me. <laughs> He would do something to make him get up the ice a little bit. Little move. Oh yeah, he's like no, little shimmy. Okay, Madonna's not open. Lettinen's not open. Hull's not open. Ludwig's open. Fuck that. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna go over here. <laughs> and it was, it was beautiful. Like it was the old give and go. Yeah. Like if I give it to you, Zuby, go. Zuby, if you get it, go. Yeah. And and it was, uh, it was the perfect, it was the perfect marriage with the uh, short time that I got. And I don't think Zuby ever got enough credit it's, for how strong that he it's was. Unbelievable how that guy never got hit. Yeah. No, he never got hit. He never got hit. Wow. It's, and, and the other thing was about him, he went faster with his feet, well, not, moving. Yeah, his feet we, not moving. I still remember I, that yeah. we would do a power play breakout. He wouldn't take a stride or a crossover. And he's going just as fast as everybody else up the ice. Let's let's talk about Mikey. Let's talk about Mike, Mike Madonna. You've known him forever, right? I, mean, I, I couldn't hear you. Mo. Talk about Mo. Oh, okay. I mean, you've been around Mo since. Well, you guys play against each other as kids? No, no, never? no. He's two years older than I was, so we never uh, crossed paths. What What about Madonna? Like, well, you know about what? Him? So he's. I think probably the best. He could play. He's faster with the puck. When he got the puck, he was actually faster. And, and you that, saying he didn't give a shit when he didn't have it? Maybe that's what it was. Yeah. But uh, and that's. What I always said, and he could do everything at full speed. He could sauce the puck across the ice. He could, you know, take the wrist shot. Whatever it was, he could do at full speed. That's what made him so special, in my opinion. I coached uh, Jordan Tyru in Sarnia. Yeah. And I told Doug Armstrong, I said, he reminds me of Mike Nano when he drafted him. Well, he's getting paid. He's getting paid. So because he can do stuff. You would see him get the puck, and it was just like Mo. I don't think he sees like he's not Mike Nano. But he can do stuff full speed, like like motor. Matty? Yeah, he did. Mike was special. He didn't have to stop or slow down to do something at high speed. Like it was, it was fun to watch. Like it goes back to when he was playing him, Holly, and Let's were together. Like the only one I felt sorry for was Let's. Yeah. <laughs> trying to keep up to those two. I, but again, that's probably one of the most underrated players ever to play the game was Lightning. Well, right? when you think about, like, and I didn't even realize this until a few years ago, I was just kind of going down rosters and shit, and I, I went and I, and I looked at our lineup, our, our team when we won the Cup. We have five Hall of Famers on that. Yeah, no, we had Belfour, Madonna, Powell, Neuendijk, Zuby, Zuba. Like, if we wouldn't have won the cup, there, right. it would have been a yeah. shame. Yeah. Right? I mean, when you have a. We had, Pat Rubik came off of, what, 48 or 50 goal a year. He's on the third or fourth line. Yeah. yeah. And he would move up, but they would kind of move him up and down depending on who was hurt. We're talking about guys that were buying in so we can win. Yeah, yeah. Rubik did. But yeah. you know what it was? It was guys like Keener that had oh, yeah. that Screw, had, screw. Screw. Yeah. yeah. I, I sat next to Beaker in the change room. And Beaker had just signed some deal at the time, like four or five years, whatever it was. I, I can't buy Troy's beer for what, you know what I mean? I, I'm having a hard time buying that. Beaker comes in in the morning, sits next to me, and he goes, Lunch, you know what I did yesterday? No, oh, Beaker, what did you do? Went out and bought a brand new dually. Said, what? Bought a big bass bro, bass boat, too. Big fisherman, right? And he goes, I still got 60 grand left over for my last paycheck. <laughs> I was like... Seriously? 
they one paycheck. One paycheck. So, you know, that was at the time when guys were, you know, they were just kind of starting to get their the payroll and stuff like that. So, but that, there was a competitor for it. There's a guy I don't understand why he's not in the Hall of Fame. Pat for me. Yeah. Agree. His numbers have to be there. The n- I, I never looked at his numbers. Oh my God. I, like, but I'm sure I know how many goals he's. The like seasons he's goals, had, yeah, he has minutes. to have a ton, yeah. He's got a Stanley Cup. Yep. Criteria for Stanley Cups, or, uh, sorry, not for Stanley Cups, for Hall of Fame. Got to have a major award, Yep. I guess. I don't know why. Got to have a major award. You have to have a championship. Uh, whatever the other things. I This is what I hear that kind of goes into play. I don't understand things like that. Like I look at a current guy right now like Joe Pavelski. When you look at his number, his goals, and, and everything else that he has, he doesn't have one of those major awards, but I mean, he's definitely going into the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame, yeah. where you are, and your brother is. Um, so Joel will be in that one. I, I just don't know. And it's the other thing, like, for both of you guys, how do you get a Selkie anymore? Uh-huh. Selkie, we can talk to Let's and go, because now it's about points. Yeah. What makes it worse is how do you get the Norris Trophy? Well, again, the Norris is the, the best defenseman. It's not the best, but it's not so bad. It's no, the it's, it's, it's the, the most, most the most offensive defenseman. It's the yes. most offensive defenseman yes. so right now. Should they change it or should they have two awards? Maybe add one. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, but I, I mean, for, for I think I know, change it. seventy years, I think they need to change it. Like Eric Carlson got it last year. Yeah. They didn't make the playoff. Yeah. No, he's not the best defenseman in the league. Hundred and some no. points. I, I, he yeah. only plays at one third of the rink. Right. Describe I def- probably want to take them. Describe yeah. defenseman. What is it now? Yeah. It's a completely different animal. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. Well, Are you good? Yeah. I think we had enough. Good. We need to go. Wait, uh, wait for Holly. I mean, Holly ain't fucking true. This is just like every other thing. Holly. Holly's not coming. Marty probably told him not to come. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, man, it's been great. Uh, My pleasure. Yeah. See you, Brad, guys. Thank you, guys. Again. Yeah, great to see you, bro. Thanks, Thanks, man. Hatch. Love's always Bye. great seeing you. Thanks for coming on again, Hatch. Uh, it's a wrap for another one here. Uh, we, oh, by the way, we are at tight ends, Brad. Yeah. And what a great place. And we have the eight beer. We're drinking. We're drinking Troy's beer. So Troy, give us a call. Uh, it's a wrap on another show with uh, subject Brad and Lutz. Next time. See ya. Thanks, guys.